show you how we can uh, import a DXF file and use it to uh, run the uh, machine which uses the knife cutter. Okay, so this is our CAD system. So if we uh, open a DXF drawing, uh, then the drawing that came through, I assume the units are inches. Uh, okay, so what this is saying is that um, the file contains these things which are called NURBS curves, which are uh, output by sort of some drawing pa uh, uh, illustration packages, and basically there are just a very complicated way of uh, defining an arc. Uh, unfortunately, we can't import those, so this is what happens uh, when um, when you try. You get that sort of thing where you've got data missing here. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, but it does mean that there's an extra step required. There's a product which we use which is called DraftSite. It's a free 2D CAD system uh, and it's got a lot of import and export um, filters and one of them is the ability to convert a DXF file into what's called AutoCAD Release 12 and what Release 12 does is it converts NURBS curves into line segments. So I've uh, used DraftSight to uh, convert the drawing that was sent through. So if I now um, import that drawing okay so that's the uh, the drawing that's come through. Um, now the DraftSight product as I say it's free so you can just download it and use it uh, as you need to. Um, if there isn't an alternative uh, to exporting uh, to release 12 format in uh, Adobe Illustrator, which it doesn't look like there is. Anyway, uh, that's the, um, the file that's come through. So uh, I'm assuming that the, um, uh, the outline is what needs to be cut and the, line, the intermediate lines are those that need to be uh, scored. Now, one of the things that happens uh, on when you uh, convert to release 12 is that you get hundreds of little line segments here on the rad. Um, it's not uh, too uh, important, but it does make life slightly uh, more complicated than it needs to. Um, also, uh, it if it's possible, uh, when you're creating these drawings in Adobe Illustrator, whether you can assign layers to different um, um, elements. If you can, then we can switch off the different layers so that we can just isolate the internal lines to the external ones. Um, but I don't know if that's possible in Adobe Illustrator. I would guess it is, but I don't know. Anyway, if it's not, then this is what you need to do. We can set up a, uh, uh, a new layer within our CAD system. And it doesn't really matter what colour we give it, but uh, anyway. So what we'll do is I've set up a new layer, and what I'm going to do is just convert those intermediate lines to that layer. So if I go to Query, click on the line, set it to layer 4. Now you'll notice that it's not changing colour, that's because the colour information is not assigned to a layer. So let's just do this through. It takes a couple of minutes just to do this, but it's not too, uh, too tricky. And the reason I'm doing this is so that in a moment when I need to come to create what we call contours for all these uh, elements I can switch off and on the layers so that the routines that I need to use for tracing the contours is much simpler. So okay, I've done that one. Okay, so if you're able to uh, create layers within Adobe Illustrator, then you wouldn't need to uh, do this section here. But as you can see, it just takes a 
couple of minutes. It's not. Uh, it's not that difficult. Okay, so I'm just checking to make sure I've done them all. Okay, so um, that's changed all the uh, internal lines to different layers. So now what I can do is, now I've got those items on different layers, I can switch off uh, the individual layers. So if I set my layer to that and hide that layer, so that's just switched off all those other elements so that when I come to uh, create the contours, now a contour is like a polyline, it's a series of linked line and arc segments, in this case just line segments, uh, that the machining software will need to follow. So a couple of things we need to do, if we go into the uh, NC uh, um, function here, this is where we're going to trace and create these uh, contours. Now you can see, if I zoom out, that the datum position, which is the zero position for machining, is currently set to this bottom left hand corner here. So that was probably where your datum was set um, when you were creating this in Adobe Illustrator. But if you need to uh, set uh, a datum position uh, uh, somewhere else, for instance, let me just assume that we need to choose the top right hand corner so if I create a point where at the intersection of that horizontal and that vertical line then I can use that as my NC datum for machining so this is where you need to tie up the uh, datum on the material that you're using to the um, uh, geometric data that we're about to create so that's set the datum so the next thing I need to do is to set um, create this thing called a contour so what I'll, uh, I assume that you need to cut this and have it as a cut line rather than as a scored line. So uh, if we start machining here and then go all the way round and then we can finish machining at this point here. So uh, I'll start off machining here. The shape is not closed because uh, the start and end point is not the same. And I'll call this uh, feature um, outer and I'll just change my line thickness so that when this completes you can see that it's completed. Okay, so that's the end point and that's created the outside contour. So we've got a shape which starts from here goes up, machines all the way around and then gets back to this point here. So because those other layers, uh, those other items were switched off because I switched off the layer, they're not going to interfere with any of the um, uh, machining that's uh, uh, taking place on this layer here. So now what we can do is switch, swap over those layers so we can switch back on the inside layer and we can uh, switch off the outside layer there. Okay, so if I uh, just make that. Okay, so now I've just got the the intermediate layers uh, uh, lines there. So what I can do now is I can uh, just use the select button to select all of those lines, and now I go up to machining, automatic. So this will automatically create the contours of all of those uh, lines. So if I say no, because I want fast mode, what this will do is it will just create an individual cut contour for each one of those lines. And I say it's not closed. And it will start off at contour number one. And let's put it into layer zero. Okay, so that's created the contours for all of those uh, lines. So if we switch on our layers, okay, so that's all those switched on. So let's now save this file away, and this is being saved in our own uh, uh, format. And I'll call this uh, NC Data, and we'll put that in. 
this folder. Okay, so that saved the drawing away. And now we take that through into the milling module. So the milling module is the one that we use for all sorts of um, contouring type applications. This could be a knife cutter, could be a router, um, a plasma cutter, anything like that. Uh, so we need to set up a few things here. Uh, these are the parameters which uh, you may know from running the machine, but these are basically uh, heights in the z-axis where you move the tool up and down to uh, between cuts. So a lot of this information will be passed through to the post-processor which uh, you can give us details of the controller and we can uh, create uh, the, um, uh, the required g-code output for that. So what we've now got is let's have uh, tool number one. Uh, so I'll just set up a, a diameter. It doesn't really matter what diameter I set here because the tool will be on the uh, the center line of the the tool center line will be on the uh, contours of the cut. Um, we set the spindle speed and feed rate. So this is the speed of the knife that's cutting. You probably don't need any spindle speed at all because the knife will be. Uh, stationary apart from when it changes angles. So we're going to use the go round command. So we're going to cut, we'll start off cutting contour number one which is one of the intermediate contours. We'll switch off the approach and the runoff because we don't need those and we'll say that we don't want the tool to be offset to the left or to the right so the knife will sit squarely on top of that uh, contour line and under the options page here we say machine all contours with the same group number. Okay now one of the things I uh, didn't do, uh, geometry info, I didn't change the group number Right, so all that's going to do is machine the intermediate contours there. We'll give it a nominal depth. I don't know how deep that you need to uh, run the knife across those things, but uh, you can set up the depths as you need to. Okay, so that's done the uh, the outside, uh, uh, sorry, the internal ones there. We'll set up another tool which has got the same sort of diameter, and this time we'll just change the colour of it so that we can see it more clearly, set the feed rate um, and again we'll use the, uh, we don't need an approach and runoff and the contour will be done with that. Okay, so that sets the depth on that as well. Okay, so we've got two tools there, one which is going to be cutting the intermediate uh, score lines and another one which is going to cut right around the outside. If we want to animate the tool and see the order it's going to do this. So this is just drawn in the order that it finds the elements within the uh, original file. So this uh, could have been the order in which you drew them. but. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's just going to go around and cut the ball. So. so when this is uh, post-processed then each one of those individual line segments will have an associated angle output with it so that uh, it orientates the line such that uh, the blade is uh, cutting in the correct uh, direction. Uh, if we want to we can run a simulation on that as well. Uh, so this will be 
the machine tool simulation so that's just loading the uh, data across now to the uh, machine simulator uh, we can just click simulate and accept all the defaults there Okay, so that's the material and that's the tool. If we want to, we can see just the material or we can see a representation of the uh, complete machine tool. And we can uh so these are the simple video controls at the top here. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, program created, and then we would post process, and that would be the one which um, creates the file for your particular machine tool. Oops, let me just stop that a second. Okay, so this would be the G code file here, and this would be the one which we need to create specifically for your machine, and it will have the associated um, A words output, which would be the uh, uh, to orientate the uh, the angle of the uh, the knife. Uh, so that's how uh, that's how we do that.